are men afraid of strong women? My name is Andrea and I'm the Fearless Love Coach and I show strong, sassy, successful single women how to attract and keep Mr. Right. So, are men afraid of strong women? My answer is no. And I'm gonna bust this myth. Because I know some of you women have actually asked me and said to me, I think he's afraid of me because I'm strong. That's why the relationship hasn't worked out. Or you said that, okay, men are weak because they can't handle strong women. So let's just explore this a little bit first, further. First of all, let's define what I would see as being a strong woman. Let's see if you resonate with any of this. Do you feel as if you're independent? And what I mean by that, that you could be financially independent, that you don't have to rely on anyone to uh, do the things that you want to do. And independent could mean that you're happy to go to the movies on your own, go to dinner on your own, you'll travel the world on your own. You're happy and feel completely comfortable and okay doing things independently and it's, that's wonderful. I would also say for a strong woman is that you can be very, very focused, that you've got a mind that can focus very clearly and intently on what you want. Having this type of mindset is fantastic. It means you can create a lot of things in your life. It means that with that single pointed focus that you don't allow yourself to be distracted, that you'll go for what you want. And when you're focused as a strong woman, if you link that with being driven, now the two aren't the same, the focus is the mindset, but, but being the driven is actually the part that takes action. So strong women I know like you, who are successful, have to be driven, you have to be action takers to go for what you want. Having that focus, being okay with being independent, especially if you're an entrepreneur, it can be quite lonely out there, and you're driven to succeed to get what you want. And so through that, you have to be tenacious, don't you? Because you're gonna come across obstacles along the way. You're gonna come across people who are in com competition with you. You're gonna struggle at times. And so you have to be tenacious. You have to have courage to go for what you want. When things get a bit difficult for you, you've got to find you know, that extra oomph to just get on with it and do it anyway. And finally, underneath all of this, is that you're willing to speak your mind, right? Is that you're willing to say what's uncomfortable. You're willing to say things sometimes to people even if it hurts them. That takes a strong woman. These are all wonderful, fantastic traits. So do you still believe that men are afraid of strong women? Do you believe that men are afraid of strong women who have these types of traits? Absolute nonsense. It's a complete myth. But this is when it becomes a problem. This is when there might be a tipping point. This is when things might get a little bit extreme in your relationships, okay? So this is what I see happen. On this page, we've got problems and solutions. Let's see if you might have some of these traits. And I'm gonna talk about three traits. These are three of the big ones that I've seen that have caused untold problems for single women who want to get into relationship and for women who are in relationship that's pushed it to an extreme that it's destroyed the relationship. So point number one, the problem, is when you belittle him. And what I mean by belittle is when you dismiss someone or something as being unimportant. One of my clients did this a lot with her partner. He wanted to change careers. And for him to change careers, that meant he had to go back to university and get a higher education. She didn't want him to do that. She didn't take him seriously. And she would actually start to put him down. She started to belittle him. Now for him, it was, you know, it was a big deal. 
he wasn't in his, you know, he wasn't a teenager anymore. So it was a big deal kind of making that change. But she said, and she admitted to me, that she didn't support his choice. And she actually told him, she said, I'm not supporting you in that. She didn't help him. She didn't want to help him. And she put him down. She belittled him. The consequence of that, and this is just a symptom of other things in that relationship with her, is that he ended up cheating on her. And they were together for, I think it was around seven years. It was a long-term relationship. She found out that he cheated on her. He eventually left her and married the woman that he was cheating on with. So this is, this is serious, right? This is a problem. That's why she came to see me. But we'll talk about what the solution was for this one. Number two, being controlling. So of course, you've got to have some level of control to go for what you want. But I'm talking about when it becomes extreme, when it goes over a point where you want to, to control everything so much that there's no space for him. It's as if you feel like he's a child in the relationship, that you feel that you need to manage, that you need to control. And these traits are fantastic in business, it's fantastic in your life, but it's when it goes a little bit too far. Like for example, another one of my clients who was struggling in her love life, pretty much perpetually single for at least 10 years. And a situation that she found herself in was, um, one of her boyfriends wanted to take her away to Amsterdam, but she wanted to control it that much that she wouldn't allow him to choose the place in Amsterdam to go, the hotel to go, where to eat. And he wanted to take her on this romantic trip, but she couldn't allow that to happen. She really wanted to control that situation. He felt that there wasn't space for him. He felt that there wasn't space for him to, the, for, to be a man, to lead. Eventually, she pushed him away. And she would fight over little things, you know, fight over the remote control, who had the remote control, which TV programs they were watching. So it's not just one situation. These are all traits that if left, that can actually destroy your relationship. And the third one I want to talk about is when you want to dominate. So when you want to dominate to the point where you always want to win. Like one of my clients, she was in a two-year relationship and she came to see me when it ended. He ended that relationship because she told me she always wanted to win. No matter what, she said she, there was just something within her that made her want to win. Again, this is a fantastic trait when you want to create a business, for example, or you want to achieve something, you want to get somewhere but it went to, to extremes. For example, they went out to, he actually took her out to the theater and he didn't park close enough to the theater and she literally stomped her feet, refused to get out of the car and started to argue with him. She said she deliberately started the argument and she wanted to win. I mean, she was like that with her hand. She says, I just wanted to win and she knew she was doing it. And that wasn't just one example. That was one example of many. To the point, no surprise to you, he left her. It wasn't working, it was just too extreme. So these women I'm talking about, they all became clients of mine. Why? Because they were struggling. They started to realize that there was some problem and they wanted to figure it out. So of course, I'm here to provide solutions. I'm a love coach. I'm not just about therapy, but I'm also about taking actions getting solutions and helping you get results. The bottom line is about you attracting and keeping your Mr. Right. So, for example, in this situation, I told her what he will need is respect. He wanted to feel respected. When she was belittling him, he didn't feel respected and that's a big turn off. I mean, you'd be turned off, right, if you didn't feel respected. She didn't respect his choices. It might not have been what she wanted him to do, but it was something that was important to him. 
So I showed her how she could be more respectful of his choices. I just said to her, look, he's a human being like you. He is equal to you. She didn't feel that he was equal to her, of course, so that's why she was belittling him. So she had to see him as her equal, even when he made decisions that she wasn't happy with. And she really wanted to be in relationship. And of course, guess what? She's in an amazing relationship. And she's very respectful of her guy and the choices that he's made. And they've been together for over three years now. Controlling, I told you about the one client who Guy wanted to treat her on a romantic trip. So I had to show her how to let go. And another word that you might have heard before is to surrender. And what I mean by that is that for her to relax and for you to relax if you see yourself in this situation and to allow him to lead, to trust that he can make good decisions. Maybe secretly you're thinking you could make better choices. Do you know what? Maybe you could. <laughs> but I'm talking about you having a loving, connected relationship. And so through the coaching together, I showed her how she could surrender so she could let go, to relax into the relationship and allow him to lead. When she did that, she attracted her Mr. Right. And they've been together for four months now and she's so happy. She likes it that he actually leads. She can just relax back, let someone else take control and enjoy the moment, even if things don't go to plan. <laughs> but she can find humour in it because she's realised and what I taught her was what was important was that they were together, that they were doing things together, sharing those moments together. And so finally, being dominant. And when I spoke about this particular woman, when she had to win at all costs. Now this kind of goes back again to about letting go and surrendering and also respecting. So you can see how they're all interlinked. And with her, it was about communication. How you spoke. Because she could have got what she wanted. Right? So this was the lady who wanted to be closer to the theatre. She could have simply asked, you know, I would love you to just drop me off closer to the theatre. I'm wearing heels, it'd be more comfortable for me. Instead of going into wanting to dominate, wanting to win. So it was simply about asking for what she wanted and being kind and soft about it. Not needing to win or to dominate. She really understood that. And now she's met her Mr. Right, They've been together for six months and he's just proposed to when they're getting married at the end of the year. So if this is you, that you're a strong woman and you had all those traits before, let me just go through them quickly again. If you see yourself as a strong woman, independent, focused, tenacious, you speak your mind and driven, these are fantastic traits. But I know some of you are believing that men are afraid of strong women absolute nonsense. Men love all this. There's nothing wrong with any of this. The problem occurs is when you do things like this, you belittle him, you're too controlling and you want to dominate. So look, if this is you, if you're a strong, successful single woman, but you don't want to be single anymore, that you want to be in a relationship with your Mr. Right, then you're in the right place. As I said, my name is Andrea and I'm the Fearless Love Coach. And I coach strong, sassy, successful single women just like you, how to attract and keep Mr. Right. So if you want that level of support, if you want to know how you can do that quickly, saving you time, saving you more heartache, saving you uh, wasting your time in relationships that won't work and that are painful for you, then click the link below, just go straight to our, my website, book in a consultation with me and I'll show you how we can work together. But for now, I wish you well and I want you to find love. I want you to find love and stay in love.